Good morning, gardening friends. We'll miss you, Robin. Welcome back to the Budget Gardeners channel here. It's uh, now Saturday at a little past 10. Uh, time for garden updates. It's been a busy week again. That's why I haven't had an update up until now. Uh, things are starting to slow down now, so it should get a little bit better. Uh, let's dive into it and take a look at what's going on around here. First off, I see another uh, dead leaf in here under the pepper plants. Uh, another fallen leaf. Um, I didn't see it yesterday, so that must have happened in the last day or so. But I haven't actually sprayed it with the uh, marigold tea, which seems to be working just to kind of hold them off for, or hold whatever's chewing up my plants. Hold them off for two or three days, or maybe peppers or just drop leaves. I may have to look that up and just kind of see if that's something that naturally happens. Um, but that's about all the damage here. Up in the big planter, I've got the heat tolerant uh, tomato plant, which is just going crazy. It's starting to shoot out all over the place. Uh, I've had to add a little bit more support with some more of the uh, green tape, but uh, it's holding up nicely. It's got a lot of flowers on it. I haven't actually seen any small fruits just yet, but it's a good thing um, considering it's been hot and surprisingly muggy for Southern California. And it's not all that far from the air conditioner, as I've said before. Uh, so this really does seem to be a heat tolerant plant. Plus, there's just something right about how it's been planted and how it's growing and taking off. So I'm happy there. Uh, the strawberries below it uh, and forward of it in this planter. Uh, the plants are still alive. Um, I've taken what I can of the strawberries from it. Uh, it hasn't produced a whole lot more lately, but we'll see. We'll just keep watching it. Uh, also in the big planter, I've got another strawberry plant, and that is, uh, I've got one of two. One of them is definitely dead and almost molding. Um, I'll skip showing that to you. The squash plant's turning kind of brownish, still getting water, so I'm not sure what's causing that. But overall, that's the update on the big planter. And this is what the brandy wine is looking like. It's still looking pretty healthy. There's a couple of leaves that looks like they're dying, but also this week I've been trying to kind of cut back on the watering, doing it every other day, trying to get the plants used to uh, shooting their roots down a little bit further to try and capture water. I don't like watering every single day. It encourages shallow root growth, and that's not a good thing. But uh, we'll see with this one. I'll just keep watching. The basil plant has been taking off for some reason. Maybe it wants more heat. Um, I really need to research these things when I say I'm going to research them. I've just been that kind of busy, so I say this stuff and maybe I'll go back at some point soon and do a bunch of research, but I'm happy to see the basil plant growing. I really should be picking those leaves and enjoying them. Um, haven't been doing that. Uh, I do cook with basil, but I haven't been taking my own basil, so that was the reason why I grew it. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll get to enjoying it soon. I'm hoping that you can see this pretty well, and the AC has just turned on behind me. Um, the hard rock is doing well, although there's still just that one cluster. I don't see any other tomatoes <laughs> developing on the plant. I see flowers that have tried to grow. Um, maybe I'll get some little fruits off of those. Overall, the plant looks kind of yellow, but uh, you can see I've got that cluster, and I'm looking forward to cutting open a couple of those and seeing what they end up tasting like or looking like, and maybe I'll actually try and get some still photos when I do that, but it's probably going to be another day or two before I pick any one of them. Uh, there's the one with the root rot. Uh, I want to get that one off soon. We'll see. This is the patio tomato, and as I had said last week, uh, last episode, uh, it looked like a lot of stuff was just kind of turning brown. I was going to cut that off. It was going to look kind of spindly and kind of like a broccoli crown. Uh, well, that indeed is what kind of seems to be happening. The stuff below is dying off. The stuff up above is starting to bounce back. If I were to actually pan down, let me see if I can do that for you. 
you can see that if there's not much at the bottom of the plant. There is a couple of tomatoes that are trying to grow, so I think that's what's keeping the bottom of the plant alive. It seems like plants instinctively know that when there's fruit trying to grow, they need to keep that part of the plant alive. But once the fruit is gone, it'll let the rest of that plant uh, die and move on to the parts that are healthy. But one of the other pleasant surprises, I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago, a couple of episodes ago, uh, I had put, I had accidentally cut off one of the fruit and uh, left it down in the planter hoping that maybe it would start to turn. Well, there you go. I know it's probably out of focus, but uh, you can see it's actually turning. So it's ripening. That was a surprise for me, a pleasant surprise. We'll see if it actually tastes any good. Now this is what the yellow pear tomato plant looks like. It's mostly brown. It's got a few tomatoes on it which uh, have not ripened yet. And maybe based on what I've just discovered with the patio tomato, maybe even if the plant is dead, these will continue to ripen. But the plant is pretty much gone. And you can see this whole network of uh, tape that I put in there to try and support the plant because it was falling over under its own weight. Well, I think it's pretty much a loss. But another thing, if you look closely, you can see this is still in its peat pot. I can't remember how much of the pot I removed, maybe down below to let the roots grow out the bottom. But uh, this goes to my theory that the peat pots may be good for some plants if they have really strong root systems that can poke through. But for tomatoes, it just doesn't seem to work. The healthier plants I have here are the ones that I've removed from the peat pots. So this may be an example of uh, you know, good evidence that they just won't do well in the peat pots. So whenever I plant tomatoes in the future, I need to take those peat pots off. Now, as for the nursery experiments, uh, the ones I have here up, up here on the wall, uh, I've only managed to really get one more marigold plant or head growing. So I'll probably transplant that to the nest today or tomorrow. Uh, and give up on the rest of the experiment. I'm going to sort of take a rest on the experiments for a couple of weeks and then we'll see what we get back to as we hit the end of summer and into fall. But let me show you the other, the other experiment. Uh, if you can forgive the air conditioner in the background, uh, I wanted to show you uh, there's a bunch of plants missing here. What I did was I had a neighbor who had tried to grow some uh, beans and he had difficulty because the same grasshoppers that caused me problems caused him the same problem. Came along and after a couple of months of growth, they just chopped them off at the bottom. Well, I had 11 viable plants between those two trays. And I just decided since the experiment, I'd gotten the data I needed from the experiment, I went ahead and gave him those 11 plants. And he's transplanted them. They seem to be uh, have survived the transplant, so he's happy. But as far as the results of the experiment, uh, you might be able to see it just from the one plant that's actually managed to come up in the 12 remaining slots, and that is a uh, nasturtium plant, and it's growing in 100% vermiculite. So that pretty much backs up what I've figured out here, is the vermiculite does really help to loosen up, lighten up, change the density of the soil and it does help me where I am uh, the way I kind of do my gardening here which is I have so many pots and planters that I've been buying the cheapest possible soil which is basically just uh, ground up wood chips and the vermiculite is actually helping to loosen that up and let things grow. Okay now that we're off I figured this was the next thing that deserved shooting it was around the pergola area. I've got uh, these coleus plants and last week's episode was uh, titled R.I.P. Coleus. Um, you can see that they really do kind of require water because the one in the back is wilted pretty badly. But unfortunately, uh, while I was watering these and a bunch of other plants last week, right after I shot the video, I mean, like within an hour, uh, I was dragging the hose around and I actually snapped off one of the coleus plants and I tried planting it back in the ground to see if it would kind of bounce back 
Um, it actually hasn't completely dried out, so it may be bouncing back to some degree. The fact that they're wilted right now doesn't really help, but you can see there's another part of this coleus that is uh, popped up from underneath, so that's good. That'll kind of fill in that area if this doesn't come back. But I felt bad that I had done it, so I actually kind of dedicated the episode to the one plant. Um, but we'll go ahead and give them some water today and we'll see how well they bounce back. Another plant worthy of note here by the pergola this is the poinsettia. Uh, I transplanted that into a bigger pot. It looks better in the bigger pot as far as just being a plant in a bigger pot. Unfortunately, it seems to be dropping a lot of leaves. So what I've started doing is not watering it quite as much, but now it's looking more dried out. So I'm not sure exactly what to do, but as I understand it, these things are notoriously hard to keep uh, during the summer. They tend to grow better, and I think that's probably why they're more of a Christmas plant. Um, but we'll keep watering it. We'll see if it stays alive, and we'll see if maybe when the weather cools off, it starts to bounce back. Okay, now out in the courtyard, we've got this mix of planters, which kind of represents what's happening here. The uh, On the left, we've got the circular planter and uh, those have not been producing much in terms of wildflowers except pretty much what's been volunteering itself into my garden um, but they are technically wildflowers so I'm gonna let them grow in the middle we've got the rectangular planter I uh, put a little bit of vermiculite in there mixed it along the top as I put in the uh, verbena and broom corn and you can see the broom corn coming up and the verbena kind of underneath it so that's doing nicely. Over on the right, I've got the uh, the ground cover with the little red flowers, which I never planted. That's a volunteer, uh, and it looks kind of like a succulent. I don't know if that's sucking out the uh, energy from the plant up above, which is a bush, which I've been trying to grow for three or four years now. Grew it from seed, so it's, I mean, a bush from seed, that's a bit of a challenge. Uh, but it seems like every year the same thing happens. It starts to get a bunch of leaves on it, and then they die off. So I've got to figure out if there's something I can do to help this thing. But uh, overall, that's what's going on. At some point this week, there was an accident. Uh, I came out and found two of the pots on the wall had fallen. I don't know if they were knocked over by accident uh, or intentionally. Or if they, I don't know, if maybe some animal bumped into them or something. But anyway, uh, that's what's down on the ground. But I managed to catch them in time. Those would be the two plants that don't have an actual saucer underneath them. So I got them back up on the wall, transplanted, add a little dirt where I needed. And uh, been giving them water. And they're a lot, they don't look great right now. But that's because I haven't watered yet today. But they're doing okay. Speaking of the plants on the wall, and going back to the nursery, this is the marigold that actually came out of the nursery, got transplanted in here as like a half inch tall plant. It appears to have now taken off. So that make, has me happy. As far as the whole wildflowering effort, I'll just say you can see that one plant in the back right corner of this planter, which is a 20 gallon for the wildflowering project. That is just getting taller and taller who knows what it's going to look like next week. And finally, that brings us back to the trumpet vine, which I've moved back into place, and the two 20-gallon, what pretty much amounts to petunia planters. Uh, those are doing all nicely. I actually have flowers on the trumpet vine, which surprised me last week after I moved it back into location. I was afraid it wasn't going to get enough sun, but I guess it is because there's flowers on the ground and flowers on the vine. So I'm happy. Um, it's been a, a kind of a crazy couple of weeks, but overall the garden is still alive. That's the thing I'm going to take away from this. I'm happy to see that things are still growing. It hasn't all died despite my neglect. So I'm going to throw some water on it today, uh, maybe throw a little fertilizer on there too, and we'll see what it looks like next week. This is the Budget Gardener signing off saying, may your thumb be green.